Come right on in. You're it, Father Fish. Nice to have you with us. You're never done, yeah. So, um, Jico has a question. Does anyone have any tips treating fin rot on bettas and garam? He's currently treating with um, Isha 2000. I don't know what that is. But some medication. Father, fin rot. Yeah, fin rot on bettas and garami. And they're currently treating it with, with whatever that medication is. I'm not quite sure what that is. Okay, here's the problem. If you have fin rot on a fish, now I'm not talking about an injury that might get a little bit of uh, fungus on it. I'm talking about fin rot where the fin is being attacked and right. eaten away. If you have that, then you have a uniquely foul tank. Uniquely foul to the point where bacteria has exploded in it to such a degree that it's looking for new food sources. One of the food sources becomes the fins of fancy fish. So the first thing to do is clean up the tank. Very likely, you've got two things going on in that tank. Number one, you have gravel in the bottom of it. Number two, you're substantially overfeeding. So the fix for this is very simple. Number one, you cap that gravel with two inches of sand. You can put it in right through the water. Uh, use a washed sand that doesn't have a lot of dust in it, like uh, the black anthracite sand, sandblasting sand sapphire sand or the white pull filter sand something that's not dusty pour it in there let it sift down let it pack that in two inches above the level of the gravel that's number one number two do not put another piece of food in there for an absolute minimum of one month you need to discipline yourself You've allowed yourself to be controlled by behavior, the fish's behavior, that is triggering you to put food in the tank. The behavior is that looking at them coming toward the front of the glass when you walk in the room. You have conditioned those fish to look for food when you're around. And you satisfy that conditioning by putting food in that tank every time you're around. Stop doing that. Stop doing it long enough that the fish stop coming to the front of the tank when you walk in the room. At that point, you can begin feeding very, very tiny, teeny, tiny amounts of food once a week at the absolute maximum. You got all that, Chief? Now, <laughs> to the sick fish. <clears throat> Take the fish out of the tank. Do not treat the water column. It's really not going to help. Take the sick fish out of the tank and treat the fin topically. Put medication directly on the infection while the fish is in the net or in your hand or whatever, out of the water. Treat it right on the surface of the fish and then put that fish in a hospital tank, in an otherwise empty tank with an air stone in it, not even with a sponge filter. Just And, and you really don't need the air stone because one fish in a gallon bowl, providing it's not six inches long, is going to be, have enough oxygen naturally dissolving in the water to be able to sustain itself. But you can put an air stone in it if it makes you feel better. Do not put food in that bowl. Don't you dare put one speck of food in that bowl until that fish is completely healed 
You don't want any bacteria in there at all. You may need to do a water change. You probably won't. The bacteria that's on the fish is not gonna is not gonna populate into the water. There's nothing there for it to eat. It ain't going anywhere. It's gonna stay on the fish, and the medication you're putting on it is gonna is gonna kill it, and it will heal the fish. Then give it time to heal. Once the infection is stopped, it needs to have time to heal. A few days is adequate, a week is better. Once it's healed and happy, no longer any infection, and you have fixed the problem in your tank, do a 25% water change. 10% every other day is a good rule until you get things balanced. Then you can put them back in there. So long answer to a simple story, but it's a critical one because fungal infection on fish is absolute proof that that tank is foul. It's absolute. You may not see it, you may not smell it, but by golly, it's there. It is foul. That's the only possible way that fish can get fungus. Caveat again, an injury can cause fungus to grow on a fish's tail because an injury will be attacked by opportunistic bacteria. They will kill the, the around the edge of the, uh, the injury, kill the flesh around the edge of it, and fungus will grow on that. Again, that fish needs to come out and be treated. If that's the case, it may not be that your tank is foul, but it certainly has excess bacteria in it, which needs to be controlled. And that's a function 100% of the time, a function of overfeeding. If you think you're not overfeeding, you're wrong. You are overfeeding. No matter what you feed, you're overfeeding. Most tanks with little fish can, and plants and a deep substrate can survive indefinitely with you putting zero amount of food in that tank indefinitely. And I, I've had comments in, 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 the, in the chat here and in, uh, uh, in follow-ups and videos, people utterly irate about this. How stupid you are, Father Fish. Fish must be able to eat. Of course they can. And the tank is perfectly capable of doing what it does best, which is providing for the nutritional needs of everything living in it. That's what, that's what the circle of life is. That's what the chain is. That's what the balance and the harmony is. If you ain't got that, you just haven't figured it out yet. So I'm a little wrathy about this because people are trying to claim that, no, I have to feed my fish every day or they'll starve to death. No, you don't. Fish do not eat every day in the wild. They do not. And a fish that is not hungry is a fish that is sick. And I could go on for days about this, but I won't because it's yeah. not the only thing we're here for. <laughs> Well, I hope you found something you've never seen before. Have a great day. Nice to have you with us. Come on back.